As the future looks towards quantum computing, you have to think about the security for quantum computers as well. And Verizon says that they have a quantum safe VPN. I'm Beth Motter here with Daphne LaFrance Rangay. Daphne, this is interesting because quantum computers don't exist yet. So how does this VPN work? Yes. Um, so you're very right to, to highlight the fact that quantum computers don't exist yet. Nevertheless, Verizon has recently um, established what they say is a quantum safe VPN between two hubs, one in London, UK, one in um, Ashburn, Virginia. Uh, so what this means is that they established a VPN connection between those two hubs across the Atlantic that is invulnerable to quantum attacks so from an attack by a quantum computer. Um, to understand this, there's sort of two aspects. What is a VPN? Why is it susceptible to a quantum attack? So a VPN, as most of us know by now, is um, a security protocol that's used ex extensively. It's a very well-established security protocol um, that makes connections made over the internet safe, partly by encrypting the data that we send um, over the internet so that it's not um, so that so that an eavesdropper sort of trying to get hold of that data can't be um, reading it, can't, can't access that information. Um, VPNs, as I said, are, are increasingly used by companies, by governments, especially in the last few months, as we all sort of switched to remote working during the pandemic. Um, VPNs were really a way of establishing privacy and security uh, for many organizations. So it's, it is pretty crucial to make sure that this uh, security protocols remain safe, remains invulnerable to hacking. Um, where quantum computers come in uh, is in the amount of extra compute power that they might be able to give to hackers in the future once they come of age, once they are mature enough. Um, essentially, those encryption protocols that underpin VPNs, they rely on cryptography keys. Um, and hacking the security protocol essentially comes down to hacking this cryptography key. Uh, this is essentially a big maths problem. With current means, with classical computers, hackers can't solve this maths problem. They can't hack most of our security protocols um, because the compute power is too small and because the maths problem is too big. But quantum computers would, in principle, provide hackers with exponential amounts of compute power, meaning that they would, in principle, at least according to demonstrations that researchers have already carried out, uh, they would enable hackers to hack those cryptography keys that we use today and, in effect, read um, the data that we are encrypting today. Uh, in the case of VPNs, this could, of course, have huge repercussions. Uh, and this is why Verizon is already looking at future-proofing their, um, their VPNs, which are a big part of their offering of their services, uh, a big part of their customers, um, a, a big part of uh, what the customers use to, to, to implement security in their uh, services. Um, they're looking at making this, making sure this is future proof now uh, so that they're not caught by surprise the day that um, hackers actually get their hands on the compute power that quantum computers promise. So I guess my next question is, how do you make something invulnerable or more secure to attacks for a quantum computer? So essentially, as I said, it's about making this maths problem that exists today, today um, even harder to crack. So this is a field known as post-quantum cryptography. Um, so as the name says, uh, cryptography that is adapted to a post-quantum age, an age where quantum computers are mature enough. Um, and to understand it, we have to look back into how cryptography works exactly. So um, cryptography keys are generated so that uh, we can encrypt data that can only be read by uh, essentially the recipient of that data and the sender of that data who both have the keys to decode um, that information. To make sure that this is strong, the cryptography keys have to be as complicated as possible. They can't just be calculated by a simple equation. They have to be really random, really complicated. So we use algorithms to generate those keys. Um, and essentially, the difficulty of the maths problem depends on how good the algorithm is at generating a key that is as complex as possible. In very simple terms, post-quantum cryptography consists of inventing new algorithms that can be even more capable at creating those keys that are even more complicated and even more difficult to hack. Um, essentially, this is what Verizon has done. They've just used an algorithm that is capable of generating keys that are more complicated even for a quantum computer to solve. And they sort of implemented those keys generated by this new algorithm on top of their VPN infrastructure to make sure that it was quantum proof um, ag again for the day that quantum computers come along. Okay, so how do we know that it's working if we don't yet have quantum computers? 
We don't. Uh, obviously, we don't have quantum computers to test this against. Uh, quantum computers are not expected to be mature enough to, to carry out this sort of um, calculation for at least the next decade, if not longer. So it's not like Verizon can sort of test um, test the experiment that they carried out between uh, London and Ashburn. Um, nevertheless, researchers and governments have been looking at this problem for a long time now, or at least for a few years, uh, since this threat is so imminent, at least for people who need to protect their data in the long term, like government secrets, etc. Um, in the US, for example, NIST, which is the National Institute for Standards and Technology, launched uh, a challenge in 2016. They called on researchers and experts to come up with um, algorithms that could be invulnerable to quantum attack. Uh, and they're sort of going through the rounds of, um, of sort of identifying which of these algorithms that have been submitted are most promising. In the latest round, they um, selected 15 algorithms that they think show the most promise for post-quantum cryptography. And Verizon tried one of those algorithms. So they just picked one of those algorithms and tried it on their VPN. Um, what's interesting is that according to Verizon, um, because this is a layer that is built on top of an existing VPN in infrastructure, they could very easily switch algorithms if uh, NIST des decides or determines that another algorithm is actually better suited to protecting a VPN. It's quite easy to just sort of switch between um, different means. So what, what Verizon has shown effectively more than the fact that this algorithm works is that it is possible today as a telecommunication giant that needs to protect their infrastructure now um, to implement implement a technology that is future-proof and that can be adaptable um, as the technology evolves um, to make sure that it is um, responding as best as possible to the future threats coming from quantum computers. All right, Daphne, this is really fascinating. Uh, the innovation just around quantum computing is interesting, and I look forward to the next decade or so seeing how it continues to grow and evolve and eventually um, become. So as always, thank you so much for breaking this down. For all things quantum computing, be sure to stick with CDNet. Thanks for watching.